Alright, I'm gonna need to interrupt our simulation just for a little bit to tell you about digital identity determination. NIST replaced e-authentication with this security process in 2017. It provides guidance for network systems to determine the level of security placed on their users' digital identity. By digital identity, I am referring to how people identify themselves electronically. I know the term is hard to define in one sentence, but think of it as your online persona, kind of like your username to access your online banking account. That username is a digital representation of you. The process to determine the level of security placed on your digital identity is quite detailed, but once you understand it, it's pretty easy to follow. Now, digital identity considers three different identity categories. These categories are IAL, AAL, and FAL. At the end of your digital identity determination, you will arrive at one of the following three levels for each of those categories, level one, level two, and level three. Before we take a deep dive into each category, I want to give you a brief summary of what each category is about. IAL stands for Identity Assurance Level. This category guides us on how an applicant can prove their identity and become enrolled as a valid subject within an identity system. This validation process is referred to as identity proofing. Why? Because it proves that a subject is actually who they claim to be before they are enrolled. To simplify this further, think about the process you have to go through in order to open a bank account. Before you can have your identity tied to that bank account, the bank requires you to show up in person and provide your driver's license and a secondary form of ID. Got it? Good. Now AAL stands for Authentication Assurance Level. This category guides us on the type of authentication process to use including the choice of authenticators. An example of an authenticator can be a password, fingerprint scanner, or a PIV card. The third category is FAL. This stands for Federation Assurance Level. This category is listed as optional because it is generally used when the reliant party and the identity provider are separate entities. The reliant party is the location where the authenticator is used, and an identity provider is the one who makes the authenticator. To visualize this, think of a reliant party as the bartender checking your driver's license, and the identity provider is the motor vehicle that issued your license. If the reliant party and the identity provider are under the same authority, then FAL will not be applicable. And if they are not the same authority, then FAL will apply. You got all that? You sure? Good. Now remember what I said in the beginning. We will need to identify what level, 1, 2, or 3, we can assign to each of these categories, IAL, AAL, and FAL. Now let's take a deeper dive. We will start by detailing IAL. This diagram here shows how we can determine the Identity Assurance Level, IAL. You can find this in Section 6.1 of the NIST 863-3 publication. I'm going to zoom in on each step, so I recommend you have a full chart on hand so you can follow along. In steps 1 and 2, you will determine if your system needs to collect and validate applicants' personal information before establishing their identity on your system. Personal information is any information about an individual that can be used to distinguish or trace an individual's identity. If no personal information is required, your identity assurance level is 1. Let's move on to step 3. If you need to obtain and validate personal information, you will need to identify the impact level for each of the impact category listed in this chart. We will do the first two as an example. The right question to ask for the first one is, hey, if an imposter were to establish themselves in your system under someone else's identity, how much inconvenience, distress, or damage to reputation will this have on your organization? You will need to determine if it is high, moderate, or low. As a security analyst, you will not make this determination, but you will need to guide the system owner with credible reference. Section 5.3.2 of the NIST 863-3 defines what makes low, moderate, and high impact for each of the impact categories. Let's do the second example. The right question to ask for this one is, if an imposter were to create a false identity, how much of a financial loss will occur? Again, you will guide the system owner to pick a category using NIST 863-3, section 5.3.2 as reference. You will then follow the decision chart accordingly. If you have any highs in your impact category, you will have IAL3. Moderate for personal safety is also IAL3. 
If you have a moderate for any category other than public safety, your value is IAL2. If you have a low for the bottom four categories, you'll have IAL2 as well. And if you have a low for the top two categories and no impact for the bottom four, then you have IAL1. If you have IAL2 or 3, you will need to proceed to step 4. This is where you will determine if you need to resolve an identity uniquely. Basically, this is asking if your identity value can be linked to a specific person. If it cannot, then you proceed to step 5. This step now is asking you if you can accept references. When using references, if the user identified themselves, it cannot be traced back directly to that person. If possible, then it is recommended you do so in step 6. This way, your security risk can be minimized. In the next section, we will review what the different IAL 1, 2, and 3 mean. Then we will go over the process for the other two identity categories, AAL and FAL. And finally, we will bring it all together to finalize the digital identity determination. Stay tuned.